By the way, uh, Gargano, when he came out, mentioned that uh, Heartbreak. Heartbreak. I guess he's been watching his <laughs> not even, 1998 not, Mike Tyson. Not HBK, not Heartbreak Kid. This is what Mike Heartbreak. Tyson used to call him. Remember? He called him Heartbreak. He did, actually. You're right. Yeah. Yes. So he goes, Heartbreak says I can go as long as I want tonight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I knew going in, because I see how long the show is, two hours and nine minutes, which is they have a nine-minute overrun. Which they got rid of uh, during the run of Chucky, because I guess Chucky ain't waiting fucking nine minutes to kill dudes. Hmm. But now I guess Chucky must be over because they got a nine minute overrun again, which I I hate. Just get this oh. fucking show over with in two hours. You don't need a nine minute fucking overrun. One hour would be preferable. So Gargano comes out for his promo. Heartbreak told me I can go as long as I want, and he just cuts this great promo. Says his only regret about his time in NXT is he had wished he wished he had taken the time to enjoy things more. He was always worried about whether if he had a promo or a match, if it was everything the crowd wanted, everything they deserved. He explains when he showed up here, he was told he would never be in NXT. William Regal, that's the one who brought him back, talked them into giving him a, a dark match. He showed up that dark match, and the crowd chanted for him so loud they brought him back. The crowd responsible for him being there. He thanked the crowd. He thanked the producers. He thanked the trainers. Thanked all the backstage guys. A bunch of names no one watching home ever knows who they are because they work backstage. It says change is scary, but it needs to happen. And you'll never fail if you bet on yourself. I bet that's just not true. <laughs> I bet we can find thousands of guys who bet on themselves and failed badly. In February, he starts the most important jo- job of his life. He's going to teach his son to be the best he can be. And the crowd starts to go crazy. Now, I watched this after the fact, and there's all sorts of uh, photos from the fans out there of what happened. And you see him. He's doing sit, sitting down in the ring with Ciampa, and Tim and Ciampa and Kyle are on the floor talking about whatever. And so I figured what would happen was Ciampa would come out, and the fans would be screaming because they think Ciampa's going to attack his old frenemy. But no, it's Grayson Waller. And he beats up Johnny Gargano, hits him with a chair, smacks him around, throws him to a table, and the show ends. Dude, I thought Johnny Gargano was fantastic in his promo. Oh, it was so fucking good. He was the greatest babyface ever. It was a great promo. I, I could not believe. Like, there, my gut tells me he's actually staying. I know everyone thinks he's leaving. And he may leave. But uh, I don't know. I just, if I were Johnny Gargano, there's a lot of things to think about here. I mean, you're going to have a child, Mm -hmm. and if you can stay in NXT and get a a trainer's gig and a wrestling gig, so a double contract, Mm -hmm. and you're going to work not even once a week, you're going to work sparingly, and you're going to be right there by your family all the time. Almost exclusively in Florida, yep. You're never going on the road. Nope. I mean, if you're going to make comparable money, I, I think that he would be just fine staying here in NXT. Plus... He's got a lot of miles on his body. Yep. And do you want to go in there and, and do AEW-style matches and, and that sort of deal? So I think there's a decent chance he's staying. Plus, the fact that they let him do this. I also, also true. But he could show up on AEW next week, for all I know. But yeah. anyway, uh, the point of this is, I thought he was fantastic here. And he was so good that when Grayson Waller attacked him, Grayson Waller got legitimate heat from these fans. These fans are chanting, piece of shit, which I don't think I've ever heard on a wrestling show. I know I've never heard it in WWE. I've never heard the crowd chant piece of shit at somebody. It wasn't you suck or whatever. It was piece of shit they were chanting. And uh, that's how the show ended. So I just thought the ending of the show was an absolute grade A perfect encapsulation of World Wrestling Entertainment in 2021. Because what they did was put a guy out there, have him speak from the heart, uh, was not prescripted by anybody else. He wrote all these words himself. He used the word wrestling and wrestler a few times, and everyone loved it and was happy. And then they had him killed by a guy whose gimmick is that he's he's in wrestling, but he hates wrestling. <laughs> he's a social media star, and he did it all to get heat. And it doesn't matter if you were having fun. Like Dynamite is all about having fun. WWE is all about heat. And this is a heat segment to end this to set up a feud that for all we know is not going to happen yeah what a kick in the sack <laughs> well you know it's it's a wwe program so you're gonna get kicked in the sack you, if you watch the show your sack will be beaten yeah it is wrestling observer live today i'm oreo the orca do you have a blowhole rating system 
Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six this, scores. This match was was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, ho, ho. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Cain ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Danhausen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.